All right. Uh, I would like to start my presentation with these four developers. I met these developers at the hackathon we organized uh, last year in Madrid. And they were calling their application something related to organize holidays for the family. And at some point of the day, they came to me and they say, hey, Alvaro, uh, we have been integrating Amadeus APIs. Everything is working great. So we have the possibility, the, the functionality to the user to search for flights, search for hotels. But you know, we're missing something. We are missing something at the end of the journey. So from origin to destination. Do you have something related to destination, content destination? I said, no, OK, it's a very good uh, fair point, very good feedback. But unfortunately, we don't have that information. So back to the office, we uh, had a meeting, surprise, about the, <laughs> about the hackathon. So we're debriefing all the feedback collected uh, from, the, from the user, from the participants. And uh, we started to think, maybe there is a way to provide this data, even though we don't own it. But maybe there is a way to, to, to expose it through our portal. So someone from Amadeus came to us and say, hey, guys, maybe you can consider the, the, the possibility to talk to another company and do some kind of partnership and do it together, do, build an API together and expose this data and say, OK, that sounds great. So at that moment, the possibility of uh, exploring this partnership with Abuxi uh, came up. So Abuxi is a company based here in Barcelona. And they have a very cool technology. It's called Talk Places that Roberto will cover afterwards. And it ex provides exactly what we need, destination at, uh, content at destination. And this is how everything started to build our brand new API called Point of Interest. So what is Point of Interest? This is a partner API. It's an API built together with two companies, exposed by, uh, through the Amadeus for Developers portal. And we provide exactly that information that these people are, uh, were missing. So imagine you come to Barcelona and you want to know what to do. What are the best monuments in the city? What are the best shops, uh, you know, uh, mm, mm, uh, restaurants, etc. So this API provides all this information ready to, to go. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Alvaro Navarro. I work as a developer advocate in the Amadeus for Developers program. We have a Really cool booth outside, by the way. So feel free to stop by and say hi. And uh, here with me is Roberto, the CTO of Abuxi. And together, we are going to uh, share our experience of uh, about building this API together, about building this partnership. OK? Uh, first question. OK, so I'm a company. I own my data. But why do I have to open this data to any developer outside? Because this is the main point of our uh, Amadeus for Developers program, is build or provide the functionality, provide the APIs to any developer in the world to connect with us in a matter of minutes. So first of all, important, we're talking about innovation. Whenever you open your, uh, your data, you allow anyone in the world to build things. What happens when you promote innovation? That in the end, you are talking about new business opportunities. All right? But not only that, something that many people uh, miss is the opportunity that really open your data to any different or uh, any other uh, industry outside. For example, we are uh, used to work for the travel industry, for the tourist industry. But whenever we open our data, you don't know what the people out there are going to use it for. All right? So what about the process of building this API? First step, the proposal. So as, is, as I was explaining before, and in our case, everything started like uh, people demanding this kind of data. So there is like market demand. But maybe you are already in touch with another company, and you may explore this possibility of building this API together. So this is the, the proposal. And what's, what comes next? So once you decide, both sides say, OK, let's go ahead. Let's build this API together. So what's coming next is maybe the most time-consuming uh, task ever. It's uh, legal stuff, uh, security approval, et cetera. So any, any lawyer in the room? No? OK, I well, love you. <laughs> so it's uh, tons of meetings, emails. It's time-consuming, but in the end, it's, it's needed. This is something we need before we start to build any API, because everything must be in place, all right? Once everything is agreed, we sign the contract, we can move forward. We have something in Amadeus called API governance. What is this? This is an entity inside the company built 
by different experts from the company, uh, experts in APIs. And we have like double mission. On one side, as a designer, whenever I, I want to develop uh, a new API inside the company, this API governance is in charge of defining the guidelines, defining the design. So making sure that all APIs coming from Amadeus have the same design, all right? So in the end, it's not only about defining guidelines and so on. It's like an open forum for anyone building APIs to share knowledge, to, share, uh, to ask for questions, et cetera, okay? What is the consequence of this? The consequence, the consequence is, as a consumer, I would like to have the best developer experience uh, possible. Because whenever I'm using APIs from the, different, from the same provider, I will expect all APIs to look the same, okay? okay? In terms of naming, uh, parameters, documentation, et cetera. So in our case, when we start uh, working with Abuxi, Abuxi already had APIs, but they were building uh, according to the Abuxi guidelines. So exposing this new API through Amadeus for developers means that we have to somehow define a new swagger, a new interface according to our guidelines, okay? Once everything is uh, in place, we have legal, we have the swagger, we can start to develop the, the API. Actually, this API governance step and the, de the development can be, can, be, can be done in parallel, so it's not really accurate like one step by step. And uh, what's, what's coming next? API Gateway, super interesting topic, uh, because the API Gateway is the main entry point for all developers using our APIs. That means if we're exposing a new API through our portal, we have to make sure that the developer doesn't realize that this API actually belongs to a, a partner of uh, Amadeus, right? So what we did was to set up a, a specific proxy for these new endpoints, this proxy is receiving the request from the user and is forwarding the request to the Abuxi backend. In the end, the backend uh, answers and the response is sent back to the, to the user. So the developer experience, again, is important because they don't have to realize, they don't have to care about whether an API is actually coming from our, our servers or is coming from another uh, partner. Same for security. So they register, they go to the portal, and they say, okay, I have my keys, I can start calling my APIs, but I don't want to care, I want to worry about uh, having a different key for one specific API. No, so it's the same key for all the catalog, all right? So in this case, uh, our API gateway is uh, based in, um, we're using APG for that. So API is flexible enough to provide functionality to do a real-time trans uh, translation of Traduction, no, how do you say? Uh, is yeah, translation of the key coming from uh, the user based on Amadeus authentication or auth, and transforming it to the key for a booksy. All right. So this is something that we, we do uh, in real time. So the user is always using the same key. They don't have to worry about that. And okay, so we have our API uh, the Swagger. The API is uh, ready to go. We have everything deployed already on the gateway, and we are ready to go. Time to celebrate. We have our API exposed through our portal. Now for the next uh, step, uh, I'm going to give the voice to Roberto, who is going to explain the, the development and the, the deployment of the, of the API. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm I going to explain the three parts. is what we do at Adabuxi, how was the experience and integration with Amadeus, and uh, what is the technology we are using. At Abuxi, what we do is analyze place, points of interest. We gather information from social media, from different shows, relate with venues, locations, content, and events to discover what are the more popular points of interest. And they start for popular, not the more expensive or, or, or nice or the best food, the more loved place. All the cities has different points of interest that are relevant and the people more, more or less and, and know this. What we try is do this globally. We gather information from different sources. We merge all this to discover from different sources one venue, understand that this venue individually in different sources are the same. Then with this data, we create a first scores for individual places. All the places in the world has individual score. With this, we can know what are the most popular in any part of the planet. 
And with this, also we uh, develop areas of interest. And so what are the areas more popular for sizing, eating, shopping, and nightlife? With Amadeus, our experience was, uh, the integration was very easy. The main pain with Amadeus, as Alvaro said, was the, the legal team. In uh, the technical part, we did change in our admin and in the API. We changed our admin to has uh, two-factor security authentication and also to change the, this, this system to regenerate the API key to about problems with change in the system. And in the API, we developed this method with the requirements of uh, Amadeus with all the configuration, creating two environments, one for production and one for testing. In the testing, we limit the, uh, the information we server by areas and by pagination. This is our current system, developed in the last five years. This is how is the production. We have two environments. One is production, and the other is the core, where we gather the data and process the data. Internally, we are using uh, Create.io to save all the data. We try to find any database that will be easy to manage and, and scale, like we are a small startup. And in production, here we have the, the APG, that is the system Amadeus is using to manage all the credentials and all the usage. Go directly through a, a specific domain. We de add a domain used only for Amadeus. This uh, domain has a certificate that only from APG can access to the method developed for Amadeus. And then this go, in this moment, our system is in Amazon, and go to the cluster more near of the system. We start the, uh, all this process five years ago, and the first version was developed in uh, CSR using Azure and Hadoop in, in Azure. And why we decide to use Azure in this moment five years ago? Azure gives us 100,000 uh, in credit for one year. Was a, easy decision. Then we decide to change our API to Node.js and move all the technology to Google. We have two systems, two APIs. One is the, an API that is an script that you can use in any page, only with two lines of code. You can add the layer in, the heat map, in your map to show heat maps with the popular areas, and also to add a location info than say what you have near, what are the popular restaurants near, what transport you have near. And uh, we decide to change to Node.js to be independent of the platform. In this time, five years, or five years ago, uh, Mono was not um, have, uh, has an all the functionalities for web app, and Netcore just started. And we decide to move all this and also move the technology to Google. And why Google Cloud? Google Cloud gives us 100,000 in credit, and also was other good decision. After this, we decide to move to SoftLayer with the bare metal server and try our, our, our system. And why SoftLayer in this moment? SoftLayer gives us 150k in credit for one year. Then we decide to uh, go back to Google because it was more easy to increase machine uh, uh, and do tests. And in some moment, the company uh, need to reduce the cost. And we decide to maintain the Google, the, in Google the production and in local the big uh, system or the cluster for the big data. We bought 16 uh, Intel NUC, this uh, small server. And we install a cluster, two clusters with Create.io, and all the system to gather the data, four teras of data, updating continuously and to generate the heat maps, all the data we, we use in local. After this, we get some money and go back to, to Google. 
And at the end of this year, the last year, we decided to move to Amazon, to some chains. And why in Amazon? They give us 100 in credit for one year. And now we have all in Amazon web servers. Our technology, we use uh, now our, um, all are in, in Debian. The, the, the two APIs we have, one is Node.js and the other is CSR in Netcore, all in Debian machine. And we use MongoDB to save some logs and uh, save uh, the configuration about the admin, and SSDB to save the data. We try to develop a system that work with geodata, but that must be very fast. SSDB can serve 25,000 uh, requests per second. And what we do is change all the system that is uh, geospatial to key value with the capacity to serve very fast in less than 50 milliseconds per request in our system. And this is how we have the, the current system. I think the, in this presentation, what I try to explain is uh, the technology that we have allowed to move to different systems. And we can find very small um, or easy tools to work with big data, like Create.io, that is in, on top of Elasticsearch and is very easy to install uh, a system, like in, within uh, Intel Look. And SSDB, that is based on level DB. Level DB is the core of the table. SSDB is like a wrapper that is incredible very fast and is very, very easy to install and maintain. And this was our experience. OK. Cool. So just before finishing, uh, the main takeaway from our talk is, OK, this is worth it, absolutely. So this is something that it works. It's something that the people out there are demanding, you know, to provide new data through uh, the portal, even if it is something completely new in your, in your company. And in the end, who wins? Developers. So if you remember the story I was uh, telling at, at the beginning of my talk, of, of our talk, and there are people out there willing to use these kind of uh, uh, partnerships. But of course, as uh, someone said a time ago, it's uh, with every power comes uh, great responsibility. And if you are opening your data to any third-party developer in the world, be prepared to scale and to perform correctly, because it's totally worth it. Thank you very much. Anybody has any question for Amadeus Rabuxi? Oh, we got one. Hey, hello. Um, I'm just curious. Do your API consumers know that they are using a third-party API? Yes. So everything is on the documentation that we this specific API point of interest is powered by Abuxi. So we are completely transparent in that, in that point. Great. Thank you. More questions? Push. Yep. OK. Yeah, the question is for uh, Buxi. Uh, I wanted, uh, you mentioned you changed, you switched data centers like a thousand times more or less. I lost count. I, I wanted to know how, how did you go about that? Because um, usually it's a very painful and slow process and it in, involves downtime. And I would like to know, like, I, I know it's not, not an API question, but how do you keep your API up and uh, responding in uh, such a fast manner uh, by doing all these changes? Yeah, this one of our main, like, we are a small team. All the times we try to use technology, we try to use things that are easy. We start with the first, we start with Azure, also because uh, my, my background was related with CSR, and I try to build anything easy. But then we try to check different things. We use uh, the change and system to Python, to know yes, and discover systems that work very easy, fast, and are very easy to move. This is why we can 
with the CREI-IO, that was one very good experience. It's a small company also. We start to try Hadoop and Cassandra. And in this moment, I think we was in, in Guaira. And uh, people from Cassandra uh, let us uh, help us with, with integration. And I spent one month trying to insert, import the data to Cassandra. And was a, I go to back to save all in files. This was my, my idea. Pre-index, save in files, and do a process like this. And then discover uh, uh, create.io. I spent one day in install the, the server. You can install, now with my experience, in, in half an hour, we can install three, four servers with create.io, start insert data, and work perfect without any problem. Then the problem with I move the data one to other plate is about the time I spend in to load the data to copy to the server. And then in production was the same with the um, SSDB. We tried to offer a very fast system, but or, or you need to install a system like uh, HANA or like, like this, that is very expensive, the big machine, and for us is not possible. Or you try to solve with other kind of technology. In this case, we start with LevelDB. Then it's very easy to install. It's a file, and then it's a pre-index, it's similar like Lucene. And you only need to copy, start the service, and run it. Then I discovered SDB. Then was the performance was better than only uh, LevelDB. And this is why we can move all the system. We changed the concept of the geospatial data to a pre-index system. The width of the, of the planet, you can pre-index by squares. And this was our, um, our idea to solve these problems. Because if you uh, have experience with geodata, it's very expensive to work with polygons or this kind of information. If you change the mind with this kind of concept, it can be possible. So we, we don't have time for any more questions, but Amadeus has a boot, and Roberto is going to be here today and tomorrow. So feel free to stop by.